God bless to the nation of Israel, to all those that truly seek their Creator with all their heart, soul, and mind. I am Asiah ben Yisrael, the Iconoclast. This is another episode of Setting the Record Straight. In this episode, we're going to seek to dispel some myths and to illuminate or to shed some illumination on the truth. The truth of whether there is an afterlife or not. The truth of does a person get immortality? The truth of do people go to heaven or do they go to hell when they die? There are numerous misconceptions surrounding these truths. It is necessary that we clear this up because it causes many people to stumble and many people to fall. The concept of a resurrection or a reincarnation or a rebirth is an Egyptian concept. It was borrowed by the writers of the New Testament, the Edomites, the illuminated Edomites. They knew that the nation of Israel, when it was a young nation, among the nation of the Egyptians, they knew that Israelites were suckers for that Egyptian religious nonsense. When Israel first came out of Egypt, the first thing they did was build a calf or build a bull, which was just a representation of one of the idols of Egypt, the Apis bull. So the hypocrites, the liars and the deceivers, they knew that we would awake at some point in time, but they wanted to keep us cut off for as long as possible, so they invented this New Testament. Yah already prophesied in Deuteronomy 32 that they would come up with new idols, newly raised up. Not Yah, but devils. So there are 7.79 billion devil worshipers on the face of the earth. So you don't have to worry about dying and going to hell. You're already in hell. This is hell. There is heaven and there's earth. There's heaven and there's hell. This is hell that we're living in currently. But through his awesome and incomprehensible power, Yah is going to transform this hell into a paradise. The way that it was when he first created it. But man went on his way to destroy it. To tear it down. To trot it down. Drain it of his resources. Filth. Smog, pollution in the air. GMOs, bioengineered food. Clones. Deception about outer space. Aliens. Demons. These are the creation of a vivid imagination. But... You have to understand the nature of the beast that you're dealing with. You're dealing with the hunter. Esau, he was a clever hunter. His blessing was that he would live by his sword. Esau is a clever hunter not because he hunts animals. It's because he hunts men, human beings, mankind. And his blessing was that he would get the dominion over the earth, and that's what he has now. But he has sown the seeds 
to his rise with lies. He's used deception to rise. He created a new idol called this Baal, Lord Jesus Christ. That's all Baal means is Lord. So now there have been many Baals. The newest one is this Baal Jesus Christ that people are trusting in, that people put their faith in, that people give glory when Yah said that he would not give his glory to another. They say that this Yeshua, Jesus, or Yahawashai, that he created the earth. Nonsense. Lies. Deception. Gibberish. But they say that he created the earth. They attribute a lot of things. As a matter of fact, over there in that pile of rubbish that they call the New Testament, you can find it written where it says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Really? So, the Almighty just gave you all his power, huh? <laughs> Delusional. You know, when somebody goes crazy, they start walking around talking about, I am a God. I am God. That's the first sign of a person that's lost their mind. They start saying that they're God. But in this episode of Setting the Record Straight, we're going to dispel this myth of the afterlife and the myth of immortality. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, let's begin with Ecclesiastes 9, verse 1. In this chapter, the wisest man that ever lived and will ever live is pondering a common situation that happens to everyone, which is death. Let's hear what the wisest man to ever live has to say about death, life and death. Solomon says, For all this I considered in my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of the Almighty. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Verse 2. Solomon says, All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good, and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifice it, and to him that sacrifice it not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. What is Solomon saying? He's saying that there's one event that transpires. One event that transpires, whether you be righteous or whether you be wicked, whether you be clean or you be unclean, whether you sacrifice or you sacrifice not, whether you be good or you be a sinner, there's one singular event that happens to all. What is that event? Let's continue on and let's see if Solomon tells us. Verse 3. They, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. 
unto all plants, fish, birds, mammals, reptiles, mankind. Huh? Yes, says Solomon. Also the hearts of the sons of men is full of evil. Ain't that why y'all in idolatry now? Ain't that why y'all worshiping the work of your own hands? Ain't that why y'all worshiping a man and calling him the Almighty? Yes, also the heart of, of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. Yes, madness is in your heart if you think that a man can be the Almighty. You are mad. Bat guano crazy. And after that, they go where? To the dead. This is an evil among all the things that are done under the sun that there is one event unto all. And after that, they go to the dead. You see that? Everything goes to the world of the dead. The grave. But lest you think that there's some type of activity going on in the realm of the dead, let's continue on and see what Solomon has to say. Verse 4. Verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a, a dead lion. Hmm? If you're alive, you have hope. If you're dead, you're dead. There is no hope. A living dog, right? Which a lion, if it were alive, would devour quickly, easily, and with no problem. A living dog is better than a dead lion. What's the dead lion going to do? The dog might feed on the dead lion. What else does Solomon have to say about this singular occurrence that transpires with all of creation, all of mankind, all of life? Solomon says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Why? Because they're dead. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Now, people, 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 for the ones that think that when you perish, you go to heaven or hell or purgatory or some other nonsensical, unverifiable, crazy abstract theory or hypothesis it says here clearly but the dead know not anything so if they're in heaven or if they're in hell existing someplace or purgatory that means they're conscious and they mean they know something so that would be a contradiction to what Solomon is saying right here. But the dead know not anything. They're dead. That's the whole... You only have one job when you're dead. And that's to just be dead. That's it. No breathing, no thinking, no moving. No existence. It's death. Okay? And there's nothing after it. Nothing, absolutely nothing after it. You don't get to go to heaven. You don't burn in fire. You only live once, one time. It's not a difficult concept to understand. It's just that science and society have shaped and molded the minds and religion predominantly 
has shaped and molded the minds of the people to think that there's some type of, you know, there's an infinite amount of space and planets and stars and nonsense like that. And religion has taught people that after you die, if you serve this idol enough, or if you love enough, or if you get baptized in, I don't know what the ridiculousness is really, uh, I don't know where it stems from. But these have been the mechanisms whereby which people's minds have been shaped and molded. They haven't read and studied these truths for themselves. They've been told these things since they were a child from roundabouts four or five years old. This is when they start to learn these lies. This is when the serpents and the cockatrices stick that, you know, that plug from the matrix in the back of your head and start to indoctrinate you. Start to feed you lies, fantasies, delusions. But like Solomon says right here, the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Okay, so, but some people might say that the dead are going to come back to life at some point in time. Okay, well, let's see. Verse 6. Solomon continues, also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, done away with, gone, never to return. Now listen to this. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Do you hear that? Neither have they a portion forever. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun, which is in harmony with that they, they don't know anything. They're dead. They're the deadies. Now, that's concrete. You don't come back after you die. Okay? Only Yah, he who creates The fountain of living water is the tree of life. Only he lives forever. We don't get to live forever. We don't get immortality. This is Egyptian nonsense and babble. But we are in Babel, the land of confusion. So everyone's walking around confused. Everyone's walking around, you know, with the hope in their minds and in their hearts that, ah, oh, man, it's got to be better than this. Uh, so they come up with these fantasies and these delusions that, you know, the Muslims say that they get 70 virgins or something like that. <laughs> and then the, um, the Christians, they get Im uh, immortality in streets of gold or something like that, you know. So basically they've been conned. It's a con job. And they've been told that they get all of this, you know, all of the good things, all of the luxuries and pleasures and, you know, their desires after they die. Well, okay, if that's the case, hurry up and kill yourself. I mean, come on now. If there was a door and on the other side of the door, there was everything that I've ever wanted or everything that a person could ever want in life. Gold, silver, immortality, um, the best food. You can fly, teleport, do all this stuff. And the only thing you had to do was to kill yourself or was to die. I mean, I think there should be a mad rush. Suicide should be the uh, epidemic, right? The pandemic should be a pandemic of suicides because everyone's clamoring to get 
to the other side. But guess what? You don't see that. People will fight for their lives. Why? Because intrinsically and innately, you know that's some nonsense. You just want to believe it because you're a child. You never grew up. You ain't a man unless you have the law in you. Unless you have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're not a man. I don't care how old you are. You could be 50, 60, 70. Right? What does Job say about that? Let's, let, let's see what Job has to say. Job 32 verse 9. Job says, Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged, you old folks, understand judgment ain't that why israel had to walk around in the desert for 40 years until all the old people died until all the aged people passed on transitioned why because they were stuck in their ways they wouldn't listen they wouldn't hear and up until this day still the same way you try and tell an old christian or old islamic person or and, you know, try and tell them that Jesus ain't real. Allah ain't real. Buddha, whatever garbage, idolatry they're into, you try and tell them that it ain't real. It'll be like trying to take a piece of food out of a dog's mouth. They will fight you tooth and nail. Why? Because they want to do what they want to do, like children do all the time. Don't a child want to do what it wants to do, he or she, all the time? No care, no concern. They don't know nothing, really. And this is like the people who are the Christians in, in, into religion. They don't really know anything. They're just following, you know, what their uh, predecessors have been doing for generations and generations. That's all, that's all they're doing. And Israel's been an idolatry for generations and generations. Isn't that the reason why we were uh, expelled from the land? Isn't, the, isn't that the reason why we were scattered? Isn't that why we were exiled because of the idolatry? So now, do you think that when Yah said that he was going to make the, the remembrance of Israel to cease from amongst nations for all of their iniquity, primarily idolatry, you think you wake up now and then all of a sudden you're not, you're not in idolatry anymore? You've been in idolatry for over 2,000 plus years. How are you not in idolatry when you wake up? You have to go to Yah. That is a must. It's, there's no way around it. It can't be circumvented. Okay? Now, these um, idolaters that are out there perpetuating lies, chief amongst them are the priests, right? These uh, creepy uh, Catholic priests, these pedophile priests who uh, basically sanction the molestation of children. The pastors who do the same thing. Eddie Long is a name that comes to mind, but also uh, commit uh, adultery and, uh, you know, theft, lies, deception, right? The Islamic people, <laughs> you know, suicide bombings and crazy nonsense like that. Hmm? Why? Because y'all never grew up. They never grew up. They never matured. They're just aged children. But let's continue. Verse 7. Solomon says, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine. The Adventists will try and tell you that you're not supposed to drink wine. They're liars. As I've said, the blind lead in the blind. And drink thy wine with a merry heart. For the Almighty now accepted thy works. 
Verse 8, let thy garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. Take care of yourself. You get the good things in this life. When you're serving the creator as a servant should, not when you're serving yourself. You don't have to die in order to get this. Why should you have to die in order to be blessed? Does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense to me. It sounds like nonsense. Verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. Your life is a vanity. It's like wind. And it's gone. Which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in life. It says this life. It's trying to, you know, make it seem like there's another life. But in life. This is an addition. This is an insertion. You could tell because it's ita italicized. For that is thy portion in life. And in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. That's your portion. Now check. Let, let's drive it home. Let's put the nail in the coffin. Verse 10, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. No work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave. There's nothing. It's the grave. It's the darkness. You go, you come in and you go out. Can you remember anything from the time before you were born? No memories. You can't even really remember anything up until a certain age. And that's the same way it's going to be with death. You, you came out of the darkness into the light and you're going to go back into the darkness. That's the way it works. That's the way it's always worked. More clues. More precepts. More lines can be found if we head over to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 36. And if we begin there, we can find that it's written, For Yah shall judge his people, Israel, right? The nation of Israel. And repent himself, relent himself, right, for his servants, when he see it that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, verse 37, where are their idols? Where are their mighty ones? Where are their strong ones? Their rock in whom they trusted which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. And that's what's being said right now at this moment in time. It has been spoken and it has been, be, um, it has been uttered now for quite some time. Look at the, the condition of the children of Israel in this daughter of Babylon and all around the world. All across the earth. Oppressed. Persecuted and afflicted. Wherever we go. No matter where we are. Unless you have found Yah and you're seeking him out. Then he's a little sanctuary. But if you're into idolatry. How many of us have to be murdered in the streets? In order for folks to stop and consider. How many innocents have to be shot in their homes for doing nothing other than existing before we lay it to heart? How much more injustice and inequity do we have to face before we say, wait a minute, what's going on? Let's get to the root of this. How did this happen? How many more of us have to perish at the hands of our oppressors and be afflicted 
by the man and have to work like a dog only for crumbs. How many more and how much longer does this have to go on for before folks wake up to the truth? Where are your idols? Where is the Lord Jesus Christ? Where is he? Hmm? Why he ain't save Philando Castile? He was wearing his emblem on his chest, right? All these ones that get shot down and murdered, mistreated and abused. They, they have their idols. They carry their idols. They bear them. They have tattoos and they have jewelry and various inscriptions of their idols. But how come, how come their idol isn't protecting them? Why is that? You're supposed to be a God. You're supposed to be a mighty one, a strong mighty, a strong one, right? The almighty. All power is given unto you in heaven and in earth, right? So how come you don't help the people that serve you? How come Allah doesn't help those people over in the Middle East that are getting bombed all the time? Where is the deliverance? Where is the salvation with these idols? It doesn't exist. They're idols. They can't see. They can't hear. They have no understanding. They can't move. And, and the people that worship them are like them. Deuteronomy 32 verse 39. Yah says, See now that I... Even I am he, and there is no other strong one, no idol with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand, says the almighty Yah of hosts. Now, it doesn't say... See now that I, even I, am we. It don't say that. There's no plurality there. Matter of fact, it goes on to say, and there is no strong one, no idol, no other mighty one with me. I'm alone. That's what Yah is saying. I am king. He is king. Yah is king. That's what he's saying. And there are no other Kings. It's only one king, Yah of hosts. He says, I kill and I make alive, right? Like he killed the nation of Israel. I wound and I heal. Like he wound the nation of Israel. And neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand because has Martin Luther been able to heal the nation of Israel? Huh? With his abominations and his transgressions and his wickedness? What about uh, Malcolm X? Was he able to heal the nation of Israel with his um, Islam, nation of Islam stuff? Hmm? Yah's the one that wounded the nation of Israel because they wouldn't follow his laws. Our ancestors, our predecessors wouldn't follow his laws, right? So there's none that can deliver out of his hand. But he says... That he will make alive. That's the valley of dry bones. And he will heal. Right? But that's for another, another video. Now this is the meat. This is what I want to get to. Yah says in verse 40 of De Deuteronomy chapter 32. He says, for I lift up my hand to heaven. Yah is raising, raising his hand to heaven. And he says, I live forever. Now ask yourself this question. Why would the creator have to raise his hand to heaven 
and swear and say that he lives forever if there are others that live forever? Hmm? What's the significance? It's not impressive. If you're saying you live forever when there's others that live forever, that's not an impressive feat. That's like a common statement that, you know, it's minimizes. doesn't matter that much if you live forever and there's uh, other people, other persons living forever besides you. That's redundant. Okay? But even more so, and let's get a little bit more. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. So Daniel had a vision, and in the vision there were three angels. One standing upon the waters, one standing on one side of the bank, and one standing on the other bank of the river. And this is the first vision that Daniel had. That's just for clarification. This is not the last vision. The first vision was placed at the end, and that was made clear by Yah's arm, Yah our righteousness, through the servant of Yah our righteousness, Yehuda ben Yisrael. Verse 6 And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So they're asking a question, right? How long? Now pay attention to this part. Verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these shall be finished. All these things shall be finished. Now ask yourself this question. What is the significance of this angel raising both his hands to heaven and swearing by him that liveth forever if the angel lives forever? Why not just swear by himself if the angel lives forever? See, this is some of the rubbish and the lies that people have been taught. This is the indoctrination that there are are immortal angels and human beings getting mortality? Only Yah lives forever. The angels themselves don't even live forever. Just like everything, it comes and it goes. That's the cycle. So the angel was swearing by Yah that it's going to be 2,500 years. All right, but that's for another video. Now, Yeshaya 57, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity. Yah's the only one that inhabits eternity. He's the holy one, the set apart one. Whose name is holy, whose name is set apart. So he's set apart. He's the only one that creates. He is he who creates, the creator, the almighty. No one else has that title. No one else could carry those attributes. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. What does that mean? We all sin. We all sin. There's not one man that does good and sins not, Solomon said. So we all sin. But you have to be humble and contrite. Once you realize your mistake, you have to acknowledge it. And you have to turn away from it. You have to be contrite. Those are the ones that 
Yah is seeking to make up his jewels. Another scripture, Yeshaya 44, verse 6. Thus saith Yah, the king of Israel. That's how you know there ain't no other king of Israel. It's only Yah that's the king. There's the governor and the high priest. But Yah is the king. And his redeemer, Yah of hosts. This is what Yah says. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no strong one. So, in this, Yah just said a lot. He just said he's the first, that means no one came before him. And he's the last, that means no one comes after him. That's simplistic. Very simplistic. And he says, and beside me, next to me, there is no strong one. What don't people understand? It's only Yah. It's always only been Yah. It's the creator. He who creates. There, there are no others. Everything is a creation of and by Yah. And only Yah lives forever. You do not get a second chance. You do not get a second life. This is not a video game. In which you get multiple lives. They say that cats have nine lives. That's a lie. And you know that to be a lie. Cats just escape death. Frequently. Is really what's being said. You only live once. Why not make this life count and serve your creator? Yah of hosts. Why not serve him and get the blessings that come with serving him? I'll end with this. Dawid says this in Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of Yah is perfect. Now, how do you abolish something that's perfect? How do you circumvent something that's perfect? Why would you want to do that? How would you do that? Hmm? These are questions that you need to ask. The law of Yah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yah is sure, making wise the simple. Verse 8, the statutes of Yah are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandment of Yah is pure, enlightening the eyes. Illumination. The fear of Yah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yah are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and a honeycomb. Now check this out. Moreover by, thy, moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Great reward in the keeping of the laws, statutes, ordinances, judgments of Yah. Well, and then we have to take a look at this statistic. 100% of the people that have died who have lived on the earth have never come back. There is a resurrection rate of zero. Now, that's significant. It's not even 0 0.110. You know, it's, it's, it's not one of these, uh, we want to call them now like fractional numbers or, you know, really minute numbers. But it's just zero, exactly. Perfectly zero. No one's ever come back and lived forever. And 100% of the people that have lived on the earth have died. Now, that's perfect balance right there. You can't get any more balanced than that. These things need to be taken into consideration. 
Seek your creator, Yah of hosts. Come to his arm, Yah our righteousness. This has been Asaya ben Yisrael, the iconoclast. Peace and Yah bless.